All right, guys, William Garrido here with another episode. Make sure you check out Doctoring is My Passion on the different platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and your favorite podcast platform. I'm on all the major podcast platforms over there. Um, you might be listening to this in one of them. You might be listening to it on YouTube, uh, the Facebook and the Instagram page. This is where I'm posting most of my memes. I'm also posting the links to the episodes. So make sure you check that out. Also, I'm going to always pitch my books. Go to Amazon. Look on the search bar, William Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O. So you can see my three books. Fourth one is dragging on a little bit longer than I wanted it to. But the fourth one is on its way to uh, some minor, minor little issues with the uh with the uh editing but that's going to be out pretty soon all right in this episode i'm going to be talking about stress and uh it's a really good it's a really good topic because the word stress is so it's such a topic of debate any everywhere Every, everywhere you look, it's a huge topic of debate. Right? It's a talk, topic of debate in schools, topic of debate in raising children, and it's always going to be a topic of debate when it comes to dog training or raising your dogs. The whole thing with stress is how important is it to the training process? Is it necessary? Is it unnecessary? Can we go without it? Should we aim at eliminating it? Can we eliminate it? Is it ethical to involve some sort of stress? This whole thing is just such a loaded topic because it is at the center of the the tool ban it's at the center of the of of how we look at trainers and how we gauge other trainers by the amount of stress that they use by the amount of unnecessary stress that they use there are people i just cannot stand in their dismissal and their and their view of stress because it's so dismissive you know, and there are people on the opposite extreme that want to do everything possible to eliminate it. And then, obviously, we look at the sensible approach and do we think, well, how much stress is going to be there? So this is what I wanted to talk about today. It, the episode came, is coming as a result of a, uh, of a, a bit of a conversation that I had with some students a few days ago in which the topic of stress came up. We're doing some training, and um, I forgot exactly what we were talking about. We were doing some training that involved um, some flooding. Now, flooding is a classical conditioning procedure. If you're not familiar with that, this is in in a very short, short, simplified version. What flooding is, is when the animal is presented with the stimulus that makes it uncomfortable and it and it gives it a an unpleasant association. It's it's already it already has an unpleasant association. You bring that thing inside the critical distance and the dog now has to realize that this thing is not going to end its life. Basically, that's what flooding is. I'll give you an example because examples seem to seem to be better for people. If your dog doesn't like to go in the water, one way you can do this with, there's a couple of ways to, to do this with, to do this, to approach this with. But one way to approach this is to bring the dog in the water. Like, 
given no choice but to go in the water safely, of course. We're not just going to dump it in the water and and let it sink or swim. But we're going to bring the dog in the water. It's not going to like it. But after a few seconds, as I'm assisting the dog, okay, and we're not letting the dog drown here, as we're assisting the dog, the dog is realizing that, one, it's in the water, and two, after maybe some moments of struggle, the dog realizes, oh, okay, I, I'm still alive. And then you repeat the process and you do it again and again and again until very shortly the dog realizes the water didn't actually end my life. So that's what flooding is like. Okay, this is one approach, this one example. And obviously in that example, there is a certain amount of stress. So that's how the, that's how the topic of stress came up as I was talking to to these um, new dog trainers. And the, the way it was brought up is, you know, also somewhere along the lines of the student brought up somewhere along the lines of, well, you know, should we minimize stress, you know, or uh, my vet said, uh, there's nothing wrong with what this student said. I mean, I, I'm really glad that that she brought this up, and it, it made for a great, um, it made for a a great conversation. I think when the student said that the her vet told her that stress does affect the longevity of the the of the dog, which is true. Okay, if you look at a person who goes through a lot of stress, you will see they age faster. Think of examples like this. You know people that look older than their age, and you know people that look younger than their age. This is also genetic. Okay, it is genetic also. But typically, more stress does affect your longevity, it does age you faster. Stress can also trigger illnesses. That's exactly what happens. Okay, stress will produce acidity in the body, which could be the catalyst for illnesses. This is in every every organism. You particularly see it with people too. So yes, that vet had an excellent point. We're talking about training. We're talking about flooding. Uh, we did some some mild sessions with flooding. Nothing that that went out of control. It was very very mild, very uh, digestible for the dog that that we did this with. Basically, one of the dogs we were doing. Um, we were uh, touching the dog. Well, not we, as in us, all of us, but like we, as in the owner of the dog, was having a little bit of a hard time touching the dogs pause so the dog would fight it a little bit so we just did a little a little bit of flooding it went very well went very smooth the dog adapted to that very quickly and the session was very successful so that's kind of how the conversation got going as we were talking about how this could be applicable to other dogs and um so talking about stress we look at stress and we and we go well yeah, we want to minimize stress. But here's the thing. Stress is never going to go away. It's part of life. Every living organism has been prepared to deal with stress. What happens in our artificial world, in our civilized world, pampered world and modern western society we have come to accept minimal stress as it being normal and there is nothing normal about it if you look at any organism in its natural state, not in, a, in, not in an artificial man-made culture, but in its natural state. And hell, even in your own man-made 
culture <laughs> even even with your with your nine to five and and your 401k and your electricity and your heater and your netflix and your three meals a day even there you are still experiencing stress the stress of dealing with bills the stress of dealing with co-workers the stress of dealing with clients the stress of earning the next paycheck all of these things right even even in that perfect artificial world that we try to create for ourselves even there we experience a different type of stress but every other thing in a in a more natural state stress is just part of life and here's what happens every animal is is adapted to that okay we we are we have the ability to deal with stress and if you don't then you don't do well and if you don't do well you don't procreate you don't make it past a certain age if you don't deal well with that that's just the truth the raw and hard truth okay that's just how it is look at any animal out there okay we recently had a freeze here in texas a few weeks ago and we saw some some uh, some uh, some birds, some animals that just didn't make it. We saw it around the around the property, just dead. Some of them made it. I mean, we're talking temperatures below zero. That's how cold it got here in Texas. Stuff that we're not used to. The uh, the local wildlife is not used to. And some that adapted did well. Some that didn't adapt well died. They perished, okay? But even if you go, well, those are, that's an extreme circumstance. We don't have to do it that. We don't have to go that extreme. Everything experiences stress. Now, going to training, okay, going to training, let's look at training. When we are training a dog, okay, when we're training a dog, typically, typically when you're training a dog, you're training it in order to there, there is some behavioral pattern that you're wanting to address. A person I'm working with right now, their dog has been very reactive with dogs and with people as well. So this is a behavioral pattern that has been brewing for some time. So now what we're doing is we're addressing that behavior pattern. Okay. Now, in that, pro we're not hammering the dog, but we're introducing some new expectations in a nice, fair manner. Okay, it's fair. It's predictable. We're giving the dog options. But there is some stress, okay? There is certainly some stress. Even with the puppy I'm working with, Cinco, my puppy, he's... uh. I think he's 11 weeks by now. I mean, Cinco, I'm just working with primarily uh, shaping, luring, capturing. You know, uh, there is some some pressure here and there, but I'm you know, I'm not like I'm not hammering the puppy. Uh, all the training sessions that you're seeing on YouTube that I'm posting of of uh, of Cinco, that's pretty much what the training looks like. Okay, it's a lot of clicking, feeding, clicking, feeding, clicking, feeding. Um, you know, yes, I am introducing some bits of conflict for the puppy to work through that and figure out how to get what he wants. So there is definitely some pressure there. But even with that, there there is still just like I said, there is I'm introducing some conflict here and there to make him think and go, okay, crap, how do I get to the thing? How do I get the thing I want? And and that's part of it, you know. Even then, even then, this puppy is is experiencing those, you know, brief moments of crap. How do I do this? Right. Another one that I'm doing with him is when I open that crate, you're gonna have to wait patiently. He wants to bust through that crate. He's a very bullheaded dog. A lot of dogs that, I, that I've worked with. They figure the crate thing out. Like if I open the crate, don't bust out of the crate. They figure it out pretty quickly. 
he's figuring it out, but it's certainly taking quite a bit of patience. It's definitely challenging his patience. And he's like, damn it, just let me out. He's like slamming against the gate as I'm closer. I'm like, dude, no, we're not. You're not leaving until you're waiting politely. And if we got to wait, we're going to wait. But you're not just going to bust out, right? And I've been very consistent with it. But still, he's like, no, I just want to bust out of that crate. So there's that bit of conflict where he's like, I want to get out. But I, you know, I don't want to do this. But if I do this, that's how I get out. So now he's dealing with stress. I'm also working on uh, on trimming his claws. That's one thing that is very important for me to do with every dog I own. I should be able to touch their claws and touch them everywhere. Same thing, this puppy being very squirrely, very bullheaded. He definitely struggles with that a little bit. So I'm doing it you know, in a very mild way, mild manner, but I also do have to trim his claws. So even though it's a very low stress thing and it's it's a scenario in which he's still winning, he's still getting paid, occasionally it does turn into the, I don't really want to do this, right? But still, it's a successful training session, minimal stress, but there's still some, some conflict there, here and there. And so that's how we're doing it, right? So stress is not going to go away. I understand it's part of it. And in some instances, it has to be part of the training process. It has to be part of the transformation process. Think about this. If you're working with a dog that wants to chase things, okay, and it's at inconvenient times, which typically it is. You're not talking about dogs that want to chase a ball. You're talking about a dog that wants to chase cars or chasing other animals or chasing people they're they're lunging at people it's just an example yes i want the dog to be engaged and focused on me i want that dog to be engaged and focused on the owner the handler so i want to amp up the value of the owner the handler but at the end of the day there is no comparison. There's you the handler and then there is the car enticing exciting car moving you're going to lose that competition. Don't doesn't matter how engaging you are, you're going to lose that competition. There's no there's no contest. There is you and then there's a car moving, run, you know, moving pretty fast and, and the dog, this specific type of dog that will do that. They can get very intense. So how do we add stress? Or how does stress stress become part of this equation? We let the dog know it is not appropriate to chase that car. <laughs> so we introduced the concept of discipline, which the concept of discipline alone is a concept of stress to an extent. Right? You're, you're sacrificing what you want at the moment so that you can get what you really want later. That's really what discipline is. All right, so with the dog... I know you want to chase that car, but it's not appropriate to chase that car or any car for that matter. There are other things we can do so that you can it, you can express your prey drive. There's other things we can do so that you can have an outlet to express the chase behavior and the biting behavior. Maybe games of tug, amping up the the engagement, amp, amping up the the if you do this, then you get to chase this instead. This is much more fun, much more uh, appropriate. Now you have an outlet to chase something, but you have to show some impulse control. The concept of impulse control, that's a conflictive concept. You're letting that dog know, I know you're thinking about doing this and you want to do this, and there's probably a reward history. There's a learning history of you doing this and getting a reward out of it. But starting now, as we move on, that is inappropriate and that is unacceptable. That's what really impulse control is. Depending on how appropriate it is to engage in that behavior, you might just have to wait before you do it. Or you might just not do it, period, because it's not appropriate ever. That brings in some stress. So stress is part of the learning process. When have you not been under stress? Okay, put the dog aside. Put the animal aside. Think to yourself, growing up, 
learning new things, growing. The only way you're going to get better at anything, the only way you're going to grow and expand and mature is by exposing yourself to these stressful situations by doing things you don't want to do, by showing impulse control. Learning new skills does take stress. It's just part of the learning process. So as a dog trainer, my goal is never to go, how do I get rid of stress? How do I make it so that this dog never experiences stress? That is ridiculous to even think that way. Why rob that animal of that opportunity to learn and grow through calculated, safe periods of stress where it is going to serve us? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in any world, any world. It doesn't make any sense to go, we want to get rid of stress. At the shortest point, the shortest point, the shortest path between two points, the shortest path from point A to point B is a straight line. Okay? So if me going from point A where this dog is to point B where we want that dog to be, if there is like some patches of stress here and there between point A and point B, and and those are you know patches of stress. My goal is not to go well crap you know I don't I don't want that so I'm just gonna go around it. But as I go around it, if I take a different path, there might be another moment of stress, another patch of stress here and there. My goal is not to be like I need to avoid every patch of stress that I can so that this dog never experiences any stress so that we can get to point B. That might take you an entire mile away from point B just so that you can avoid stress. And even then, you're still going to miss the end goal. It doesn't make sense. My priority is never, how do I completely get rid of it? My priority is going to be, how do I minimize it? How do I make it so that it's fair? Okay, doesn't mean I'm just going to punch the dog and just shove him into stress just for the hell of it, just so that he could get to point B. But my priority is how do I get him to that point with minimal stress? Not with zero stress, but with minimal stress. And if there is stress, it has to be fair. It has to make sense. Okay, that's part of the whole concept of discipline. Look, Fido, I know you want to bite that dog. I know you want to bite that child. You're not going to. I know you want to express this part of you. You're not going to. I'm going to make sure you don't. Is that going to involve some stress? Absolutely. Now, you might be thinking, but Will, what about uh, counter conditioning and systematic desensitization? Yes, that's where I can look at it and go, if applicable, I can do that to minimize stress, to let the dog know, hey, maybe you got the wrong idea here, fighter. Maybe that, maybe that child is not trying to hurt you like you think. Then counter conditioning would be perfect. But if that's not the motive, if, if the motive is, I just want to hurt little Jimmy. I just want to hurt that child. He looks enticing. He looks like he could be prey. He looks like he could be fun to 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 uh, put my sink my teeth in. Counter conditioning is not going to do anything because the motive is different. Now, if you don't understand the different motives behind aggression, I suggest you scroll back, up or down. To the previous episodes, I have three a three part episode on on aggression. So part one, part two, and part three. It's on the YouTube channel as well under the podcast playlist. If you're listening to the podcast, just scroll down or up, whichever way, and uh, and you'll see 
three episodes on aggression where I touch on the different motives behind aggression. Okay, not not all aggression. This is a very common misconception where people go, "Oh, aggression! All aggression is rooted in fear." That's that's horseshit. It's not all rooted in fear. There are different motives. But anyway, but if but if it is rooted in fear, then yes, counter conditioning, systematic sensitization should reduce the stress, eliminate the stress, and go. Oh, I just had the wrong idea. I'm sorry, dude. I don't want to bite you. But if that's not the motive, now you're going to have to show impulse control. Now there's going to be now there are going to be consequences for those behaviors. And now you're going to have to restrain yourself. Now you're going to have to show discipline. I know you really want to do this, but you don't get to do that. All of these changes in the routine and the behavior pattern do involve some level of stress. We're changing things. We're letting that dog know it's not the way it was anymore. We got we to change things for it to be better for you, for it to be better for, for the entire family so that you don't end up in the shelter. So changing a behavior pattern, that does take some stress. It's just, it's just part of it. So my, my job is not to get rid of it, to minimize it, yeah, but to be realistic about that and go, it is going to be part of it. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned if, uh, if I'm doing a training session and I perceive that it could lead to some stress. Now, if I'm, if I'm doing a training session where I'm doing counter conditioning and systematic desensitization, the goal is for that to be stress-free. Otherwise, it doesn't work. That has to be stress-free. If I see stress, I move too quick. I went too far too fast. And then I got to redo that so that I don't have any stress there. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm going to see stress every time I do a training session. I shouldn't. But occasionally, you are going to see, especially as we move on to the restraining and the, and the, and the discipline and the impulse control, there you're going to start to see stress. Okay. But that doesn't mean we're going to hang the dog. I'm like, oh, well, it's just part of training. Just hang the dog, right? Kick the dog or, or do this and, and be very, slap the dog in the face and do this. No, it doesn't mean that we have to be just very liberal, apply stress liberally just because it's going to be part of it. No, we want to minimize it. Okay, we don't want to go crazy with it. Because the whole concept of oh let's just get rid of stress that's at that's at the at the core of the purely positive movement. They're like, oh just no stress because it's inhumane. What the hell are you talking about? It's normal. You really you are really so caught up in this artificial world that doesn't even apply to you or your kids. And you want to try to apply this ridiculous, unrealistic model of what you think life should be on an animal? It doesn't make sense. And then you base that theory on the fact that whales get trained with clickers. Those animals that live their entire lives in a pool. And you want to say, well, we can we can train dolphins and whales with clickers, so we should be able to train dogs with clickers. And you base the no stress concept off of that. How stupid and ridiculous can you be where you use the example of a whale in a pool? to base your argument against stress. You don't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. Okay? So, no, we're not going to get rid of stress. It is part of life. It's only one way stress goes away, and that's when your heart stops beating. Okay? And then, whatever happens, happens whatever your belief is on that. But stress is not going to go away. Look look outside your window. Any, every living thing outside your window, 
I guarantee you, deals with stress, incredible amounts of stress on a daily basis. Your neighbor is dealing with stress. You are dealing with stress. Your child is getting picked on at school. Your child's getting low grades. Your child is going through peer pressure. Your child has to make choices. Your child's getting acne. You're dealing with bills. You're dealing with stupid people. All of that. Why would you say, I don't want any stress on a dog? Use your brain. Doesn't make sense. Okay? So don't be afraid to to make stress part of training. Don't be crazy with it. Your dog should not be panting and and yawning every time you pull it out. If that's happening, if stress is just like a constant, you you are doing something wrong. Okay? But don't be afraid to see stress occasionally. That's one thing that I see with new dog trainers. Oh, he's just just getting stressed out. Okay, we're not we're not asking the dog to do something incredibly difficult. And yes, there is a little bit of stress here. We can make it past this. As soon as we make it past it and the dog figures it out, the dog's gonna be fine. Now if the dog's really stressed out, yeah, we've got to pull the plug. We have to change our approach at times. But a little bit here and there, people get more stressed out than anything. I'll give you uh, I'll give you another example. We had uh, we were doing a training session outside, and it was raining today outside. It was raining, and it started to kind of pour a little bit. And one of the dogs was super happy doing the training session outside, and one of the other dogs, you could see that his demeanor changed. He got a little bit sad, um, and um, and the 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 trainer, the owner and trainer of this dog, informed me that. Yeah, he doesn't like rain. But it wasn't a big deal. So we talked about it. And we're like, you know, most people, when it rains, they go inside. People don't like rain. <laughs> so we go inside and we bring our dogs inside. And so our dogs get used to that. So I just told I just told this trainer and the owner of the dog, I told her, just run. No, I know he looks a little bit bummed out because it's raining, but just run. Just be happy with him. Just run back and forth. As soon as she started that doing that, it took like maybe a couple of uh, a couple of passes, and the the dog's tail came up and he got happier. And you could tell he was now his demeanor was changing. And then you know I told her, you know when you're a kid, you don't hate the rain. When you're a kid, you love the rain. You see the rain and you're like, oh my god! Like it, when you are a little kid, and you know unless it's cold, but even then. When you're a little kid, you don't typically go, oh, my God, it's raining. Let's go inside. At least I didn't. And I know a lot of kids that don't. Like, you get pumped. You, there's puddles. You're playing with the puddles. And it's raining. And you enjoy the rain. What happens is your parents come out and they tell you, you got to come inside. It's too cold. You're going to catch a cold. And then this becomes part of your norm. And then you get civilized. And then by the time you're an adult, this has been ingrained in you so much that you're like, oh, my God, it's raining. I got to go inside. I'm going to catch a cold. And then we forget that at some point in our lives, we loved rain. Okay? So, uh, where am I going with this? In this particular dog's case, there was a moment of stress. It started raining and the dog goes, oh, screw this. It's raining. I'm stressed now. And it would have been very easy to go, oh, Poor, let's go inside. He's stressed out. We want to eliminate stress. So let's go inside so that the stress goes away. But we didn't do that. Instead, we we're like, hey, just run around with him. Just let him be a dog. Run, run, run. And he's going he's gonna to deal with this stress. And person realized, hey, it's actually not that bad. So we made it through stress. And then this dog was like, oh, this isn't bad at all. It's actually kind of fun. And we went through stress for the dog to get better. Had our goal been to, let's get rid of it now, that dog would not have gotten better. It would have just been another repetition where it felt rain, it went inside, pressure went away. All right? It's like when it rains, if you get stressed out for the rain, tr trust me, try this. Okay. 
when it starts raining, instead of trying to rush indoors, just embrace it. Just em- just accept I'm going to be wet. My feet are going to get soaked. I'm going to get water inside my shirt. But just embrace it. Once you embrace it, you'll notice it's not that bad. And then you can be outside in the rain for a while while everybody's tippy-toeing trying to stay dry. You're not going to stay dry. If it's raining and you're outside, you're not going to be dry. Just embrace it. Okay? So what do we do there? We are dealing with the stress. We're not trying to eliminate it and go inside. We're going, I'm going to deal with this stress. And once you go through it, it makes you better. So stress is there to stay. So you might as well deal with it, especially with training dogs. Don't worry about stress too, too much. All right, I'm going to end it on that one. See you guys in the next episode.